If I told you about her, the princess without voice, what would I say? I always loved the idea of a Beauty and the Beast story where the Beast didn't transform. He's had this vision for a long time. He's wanted to do this story about a woman who falls in love with this extraordinary creature. The shape of water is the shape of love. Love and water are the most malleable, powerful things in the universe. They see a monster and she sees something else entirely. Love can literally break through walls. When he looks at me, he doesn't know how I am incomplete. He sees me as I am. This tiny character in Eliza, without a voice, but she's got this big heart that radiates on the screen. Don't do this, Eliza. Don't do this. He's coming for you. You gotta go now and you gotta take that thing with you. The creature changes everybody, good or bad. It's the transformative power of love. She will stop at nothing. You know, something you're not telling me, you're gonna tell me. The Shape of Water is a fairy tale for troubled times. You clean that lab, you get out. The thing we keep in there is an affront. When I wrote The Shape of Water, I wanted one character to be made by three actors. Octavia, Richard, and Sally are a single character. Whatever this thing is, you need it. So, you just tell me what to do. Giles, he learns about his relationship with her as the movie goes, that how important it is to him. Oh, God, I'm so proud of you. You're good. God, you're just, you're not afraid. Eliza takes them on this journey of salvation. I wanted to have characters that were marginal because all three of them are invisible, and yet they get together and they give the finger to the man. Don't do this, Eliza. Don't do this. Zelda is all about whatever goes on, it's, she's invisible to it. Octavia basically is Sally's running commentary. They are almost different sides of the brain. Sally's character has a very unique stance. Her strength really starts to show when she's protecting someone else. That's good. Looking like you don't know anything. She doesn't know her strength, and that's what love does. She has to save the day, but she can't do it alone. Our chemistry, it took on a whole nother life when we got together. We definitely become this one unit. He's coming for you. You gotta go now and you gotta take that thing with you. Embracing the uniqueness of us all and that it's a huge strength to be worshipped and adored. You know something about what transpired here? It's your obligation to report it. I play Strickland. I work for the government. I'm in charge of a very special project. Our only concern is the asset. The Soviets want it. Do you have it? Sure, I'm getting it back. Normally, if we were doing this as a monster movie, the character of Strickland would be the hero, the square-jawed government agent, and the creature would be the monster. I wanted to reverse those things. Did either of you see someone coming in or out of the lab? Nothing out of the ordinary, no. For Strickland, it's about control and science and getting a leg up on the competition. This is the most sensitive asset ever to be housed in this facility. With Strickland, I wanted to write a bad guy with good guy moments. You give him moments that you normally wouldn't watch the villain go through. You deliver, that's what you do, you deliver, right? Right? Strickland wants to be perfect. He's a perfectionist and he wants to be invulnerable. He's actually scarier than the creature. If you know something you're not telling me, you're gonna tell me. One last time. Where is it? It's terrifying, like a monster that he needs to hurt and control others. Oh. Sit down! No! He's coming for you. You gotta go now and you gotta take that thing with you. He is going to do whatever it needs to be to deliver. I deliver. What'd you say to me? What is she saying? What is she saying? <laughs>